We have some more cruise ships performing rescues at sea. And how about a last minute dry docking that was done with the passengers still on board the cruise ship? Well, let's get into some cruise news. Chris here with High Seas Cruising and welcome to today's video. All right, we're gonna talk about cruise ships performing rescues at sea. Recently, we've had both the Carnival Dream and the Carnival Celebration. They've done some rescues at sea. They have some makeshift rafts with refugees on board and the cruise ship stop and render aid. Now this is becoming a more and more common occurrence. You do hear about cruise ships making these types of rescues all the time. But in the most recent story, when I was reading about the Carnival Celebration and its rescues at sea, there were quite a few comments that ranged everywhere from, yay, glad Carnival is doing this, all the way through, is it safe for these individuals to be on a cruise ship? All the way down to one comment who said, I can't believe that Carnival Cruise Line does this. I'm not gonna sail with them anymore. I'd rather go with a classier cruise ship where this won't happen. So that makes me want to talk about cruise ship rescues, why they happen. First up, it is just the decent human thing to do. You see people in trouble, you see people that need some help, and you stop and you help them. But let's take decency out of the picture. Let's take any political information out of the picture and just talk about cruise ships and why they do cruise ship rescues at sea and kind of go over real quickly the process. So first up, it is maritime law. The cruise ships are required to stop and render aid and help out. Now this can be anything from the vessel that they stop to help saying, hey, we don't need any help, to giving them some food, some water, a maritime radio, and letting the Coast Guard know where they are, all the way up to having to bring them on the cruise ship because they are in a life threatening situation. Now, when it comes to safety and security on board the cruise ships, believe me, they take this seriously. Think about when you get on the cruise ship, you have to go through security. You go through a metal detector. Your bags go through x-rays. So believe me, they're not just letting people on board the cruise ship in the middle of the ocean and not checking them out. They're making sure security is there. They're being checked. They just don't bring people on board a cruise ship and let them run free. If they are brought on board, they're given food, they're given water, they're given medical attention, and they are kept in crew only areas. They're not free to roam the ship. You're not gonna head up to the Lido deck and see someone that was just rescued sitting by the pool with a rum punch in one hand and a guy's burger in the other. They are kept in crew only areas. The Coast Guard, of course, is informed, and then they are handed over either to Coast Guard or immigration, depending on the situation. Now, that could mean a Coast Guard vessel comes out to the cruise ship, or they're handed over once the cruise ship reaches port. And for the most part, your cruise is not interrupted. It's not affected. This is the ship may stop. It may slow. It may cause a delay. But at the end of the day, it is the humane thing to do, and it is also the legal thing to do. And cruise passengers are safe anytime this happens because the safety of the passengers, the safety of the crew, the safety of the ship is always paramount with cruise lines. And most of the comments that I read, of course, are, you know, thanking the cruise lines for doing the right thing. But as I said, there was enough of them, of people that maybe didn't understand the process, didn't understand why cruise lines do this. And for those particular comments that were just rude and nasty that I read about cruise lines that are following the law and doing the right thing, well, maybe cruising just isn't for you. All right, so guests on Canards, Queen Victoria, well, they had an unexpected adventure added to their itinerary on their current cruise. So currently sailing a 15 day itinerary over in Europe, Queen Victoria had an unexpected dry docking situation, which she did, but she did it with the guests still on board the cruise ship. So apparently for the last few months, the Queen Victoria has been having an issue with one of her Azipod blades. And the situation has created some excessive vibrations around the aft areas of the ship, either the blades dead, broken, damaged, something taking it away from the way it's supposed to be. And if you've ever done any kind of boating, even small boating, if one of your prop blades is damaged, broken, or bent, you can have vibrations and issues with the engine. And apparently that is what has been going on. And the way to resolve this was to dry dock the ship and replace the blade. Now guests were notified on embarkation date in a letter from the captain, making them aware that this itinerary change and this impromptu dry dock was going to happen during their cruise. Queen Victoria will be going into a dry dock in Caldees during your voyage. 
This means that unfortunately we will be canceling the scheduled call in Lisbon on 4th January. And instead you will be in port over two nights to explore the ancient city of Chaldees. We will be arriving there with time to go ashore during the evening of Monday, 2nd of January and departing on the morning of Wednesday, the 4th of January. While in dry dock, our service and activities will largely continue as normal. There will also be complimentary regular shuttle buses to and from the yard to the city center. So this dry docking does resort in a port cancellation. They won't be going to Lisbon, but on the other hand, how often does a cruise ship go into dry dock with passengers still on board. Now I can only speak for me, I definitely cannot speak for everyone out there, but if I was on a cruise and part of my cruise suddenly was a dry docking experience, something that passengers generally do not get to be a part of, I would find it very interesting, very exciting, just to look over the side of the ship and see what I could see and what processes I could see of the dry dock experience. I would be fascinated by it. I realize not everybody would be fascinated by it. I know this wouldn't interest everybody out there. And there are people that were probably looking forward to stopping in Lisbon. But when we've seen what some of the other cruise lines have done in the past, whether it's cut a cruise short, whether it's start removing port after port after port, or just canceling cruises altogether, given those choices, I would much rather have the dry docking experience. And to be honest with you, I might book a cruise if part of the cruise was a dry dock experience, knowing it ahead of time, I might still book that just for the experience. All guests will be required to use the shuttle bus service between the ship and the port gate. No walking through dry dock area is permitted. Guests must stay within the defined footpath between the ship and the shuttle bus pickup. So obviously guests are not gonna be allowed to go down into the dry dock. They're gonna have a specific path to get on and off the ship. So yes, even while the ship is in dry dock, the guests are still free to disembark the ship. They are free to go into the city. The cruise line is providing the shuttles to get them from the ship to the city, no additional charge. And I'm sure even on that footpath between the shuttles and back to the ship, you're still gonna probably be able to see some of the stuff that's going on because they are doing the work on the azipod, which means it's underneath the aft end of the ship. So yeah, if you're up on deck, you won't be able to see exactly what they're doing, but you never know. You might be able to see some stuff along that particular footpath from the ship back to the shuttles. We thank you for your understanding as we carry out this essential piece of maintenance and hope that you thoroughly enjoy this once in a lifetime opportunity for guests to admire Queen Victoria out of the water. So what do you guys think of that particular itinerary change? Would that be something you were excited about? Something you were upset about? I find it exciting. I find it interesting. I do find it to be a once in a lifetime type opportunity because how often do you really hear of cruise ships in dry dock with the passengers still on board? And at the end of the day, it beats having your cruise canceled, cut short and sent back home, which is always a path to cruise line could have took, but I'm betting these passengers are happy that they didn't. All right, and that is gonna be your cruise news for today. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you haven't done so yet, do me a favor and hit subscribe. It is free to do so. Helps our channel grow. Let you know anytime we put out a new video. Hope everyone out there is having a really great day. And like always, we will see you out on the high seas.